It's early uh, Saturday, the 24th of Feb. I was going through a way for so no flash gimmicks, no edits. I just want to talk about something that I don't get. Tim Scott. Now, we've labelled Tim Scott uh, Uncle Tim Scott. Nice but dim Tim Scott. Uh, maybe you have a name for him. Comment section's all yours. And that's not to insult Tim Scott. That's just to help me, and I'm being really serious here, explain who and what is Tim Scott, because I don't get it. All right, let's just look at Tim Scott, politician in South Carolina. What has Tim Scott actually achieved? Um, one for South Carolina. If you know anybody who's in South Carolina, if you are in South uh, Carolina, just explain to me Tim Scott. Now, I believe that Nikki Haley was the person who uh, discovered, who found, who gave Tim Scott his political break. Question one. At this stage, there should be some flashy logo that says, one, one, one. But no. Question one. Think about it. Nikki Haley gave Tim Scott his break. Is Tim Scott grateful? Well, he's so grateful, he dumped, I repeat, dumped Nikki Haley. We deserve a commander in chief with a backbone. We deserve a commander in chief who brings us world peace. We deserve President Donald J. Trump. To, well, take his head and in the same way you would put your fist through a tiny hole if you made it in your hand. Backside of the former losing president of the United States of America. That is a fact. That's not me making some, yeah, I'm obsessed with Trump. It's just a fact. So he dumped Nikki Haley. So maybe you can just say that's politics. His good friends, I should add, with Lindsey Graham. The only reason I say that is because Lindsey Graham is one of these flip flops. Depends who's speaking to him at the time in terms of what reply he uh, gives you back. But that's just an aside. I want you to tell me is Tim Scott holding some secret he doesn't want anyone to know about? Is there something about Tim Scott we don't know? Just press the like button if you think yes. The second point I'm saying that is because Tim Scott must be aware of some of the comments in terms of him being a little bit, um, you know, suck up on all four knees, etc., etc., to former guy. I mean, Lindsey Graham does exactly the same. Former guy, you know, back in the day, they'd get somebody in the stocks and throw rotten vegetables and boo them and whatever. Tim Scott is the sort of person who would have somebody throw rotten tomatoes at them, and a day later they're saying, yeah, throw more tomatoes. He doesn't seem to have any uh, personal integrity. But back to his achievements, what has he achieved? What is his speciality? Is it uh, medical? Is it the medical world? Is it housing? Is it finance? Because it's weird. Tim Scott is one of these people who apparently has an opinion on everything. Literally. How green are leaves? Well, leaves need to be green. But he was asked his thoughts on what's going on in Alabama with IVF. And this is somebody who wants to be a uh, vice president, I think. And if you're vice president, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I tend to think, look after your people. And uh, some of those people may be female. And an issue that, or families, and an issue that could come up is IVF. Uh, and if IVF is banned, if IVF treatment is stopped, as in Alabama, that is something you would imagine a vice president would have some interest in. I mean, VP Kamala Harris has had a lot to say about it. Donald Trump says that he wants to protect IVF. Don't get distracted from the facts. He literally is the architect of this entire crisis. What happened in Alabama is a direct result of what happened in the United States Supreme Court. He handpicked three members of the United States Supreme Court with the full intention for them to overturn Roe v. Wade and take away the protections around every person's freedom and right to be able to make decisions about their own body and not have their government tell them what to do. 
Senator, Senator, the Alabama Supreme Court ruled that embryos are children. That's raised questions over whether in vitro fertilization can you know, move forward. Is that a stance that you agree with? Well, I haven't studied the issue, so I'm going to let Nikki Haley continue to go back and forth on that issue. But Senator Trump. Trump. Time for He's asked a question. I kid you not. He says, oh, I haven't had a chance to study that. I don't know too much about it. Weird. And the other thing I say is, um, with regards to Tim Scott, now I tend to think um, politicians leverage any opportunity, photo, PR, etc., to get talked about. But I've never seen somebody be so calculated with their romantic situation. Now, it could be pure coincidence that Tim Scott, who apparently has claimed to be one of America's oldest virgins, suddenly gets a whiff that he may be... Um, well, in Trump's lane to be... Actually, no, it was before then. It was just about before he was about to quit from being a nominee to be the Republican uh, presidential candidate. And that was never going to happen. But miraculously, he produces a partner on stage. Now, it doesn't matter whether it was a man, female, whatever. That's his business. But it's, it just reeks. It's a bit cynical. Why now? And it all felt a bit manufactured, a bit staged. To be honest with you, no offence to the lady involved, but he could have brought a blow-up pig on stage, a blow-up doll, a balloon. It would have been the same thing, because it didn't feel normal. However, that being said, it all died down. And I'm not questioning anything about Scott's personal life. But what I find so just, this is what I'm saying, there's something that doesn't add up. Normally when people get engaged, there's loads of pictures and celebrations. Two photos. Never seen them since now. Obviously they're private people, no problem. But it's weird. He announces it just as he gets a little whiff that he might be a candidate. Well, he's being used, obviously, uh, to be Trump's running mate. Now, normally as a running mate, you like to think there's a level of equality. It's very weird that you have a running mate who's literally on all fours. I'm not going to go, he's saying yes, sir, because that would sound wrong. He's saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you need? And I, this is not an impression. You can Google it. Uh, Tim Scott is shuffling and jiving and dancing. I am sorry. This is going to offend people. And I've said it before. This is how I see that particular relationship. Uh, back in the day, it's going to upset people. But back in the day of uh, the slave trade, there used to be people that you would call a grass, an insider, that was off at the big house, chucking and jiving and telling stories about people who had exactly the same color skin as them. But they were a little bit, they thought they were special. And so they were like, uh, you know, given, I don't know, an extra cookie. Tim Scott gets extra cookies because he is Trump's what does he actually do for Trump? Who does he represent? And why has Tim Scott got no friends? I don't understand. How can you have a politician who has no friends? They had a, um, there was a convention, black conservatives. So we had a little look on social media to see if we could see anything. It's the same one where Trump's made some, basically, R-A-C-I-S-T, I would say, comments. Found about six people who posted about it. They've all locked their Instagram. It's almost like they're ashamed or embarrassed. Why would you be ashamed or embarrassed to be stiffing the backside of a former guy from a Tim Scott position? Something doesn't really add up. Do you think when Tim Scott looks... What does Tim Scott see when he looks in the mirror? Serious question. What does he see? A loser? A clown? And after this is all finished, how is Tim Scott ever seriously going to expect anybody to take him seriously? And if, can you imagine, on your CV, what's your job? I work for Tim Scott. A fine difference between being a toilet roll and working for Tim Scott. In fact, some people would say a toilet roll has more uses. But anyway, back to the main principal question for this Saturday. And it is, I'm being totally serious. Does Trump have something on Tim Smith? Sorry, Tim Smith. I can't even get his name right. Um, 
Uncle Tim Scott. That's his right name. Does Trump have something on him? Because if there's any other explanation, please, in the comment section below, somebody somewhere has got to explain what's going on. You think there's something? Is there a secret that we need to know? Because if you want to be VP, we should know everything. Thank you. Comment section is all yours. Less. Would you rather have the black president or the white president who got 1.7 billion off the price? I think they want the white guy right now. And then I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing, but it. 19 days out from the election, you've been labeled a racist. You've been called a sexist. How, how do you respond to that? Uh, I am the least racist person you've ever met. Good. These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones, you see? That's how far I've come. That's how far I've come. That's a long, that's a long way, isn't it? These eyes. <laughs> uh, we've come a long way together. Lynn Patton. Even the sneaker thing. I was on social media last night. Very interesting, as you see black support eroding from Joe Biden. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, th this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Question for you on that point, though. Yeah. Will the people that are excited about the sneakers and excited about Donald Trump, will that translate into them going out and voting for Donald Trump? Well, anybody willing to put 400 bucks down for a pair of sneakers? Yeah, I think that's commitment and love. I it's hope something. You're right. It's something. It's affection. Unlike racist Joe Biden, I've spent my entire life working hand in hand with black Americans to create jobs, build buildings, invest in our communities and expand opportunity and freedom for citizens of every race, religion, color and creed. And we have. I built a lot of buildings. And I want to tell you, a black worker is a great worker. You've done an incredible job. They've done an incredible job. Y'all. Tonight at a rally in South Carolina, Donald Trump actually said this. Good. These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones, you see? That's how far I've come. That's how far oh. I've come. That's a long, that's a long way, isn't it? The mugshot, we've all seen the mugshot. And you know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts and they sell them for $19 a piece. It's pretty amazing. Uh, he only, who is he? Hallie James Almost? He only, he, I see black people. Uh, I just wonder, did, did he see his African American out there in, in, in in the lights, what are the lines do I have here? Oh, were they wearing his sneakers? The black people he saw in the lights said, as for that mugshot, come on now. See, so think he's Biggie Smalls? Who is America? Please, please share with your Trump loving friends these clips. Actually, they might like it, but ha have them understand why what we just heard is so no lie. I was driving somewhere the other day and actually saw this sign, um, stand up comedy classes. Uh, I tried stand up comedy once and it wasn't very funny. Having said that, you could probably say it was due to the material. If I tried now, I would probably start with Matt Gates and Jim Jordan. I don't think you need any more material. Uh, just in case you do, I'll let you see some of the stuff that went down at Sea Crap. People, this is the weirdest thing I didn't realize. People pay to go to see crap. Don't ask me why. 
Would you pay to go and hear uh, Jim Jordan and Matt Gates speak? No jokes about Venmo either, by the way, or what was it, Cash App, however, uh, Matt Gates allegedly gets his money for that other stuff. We won't go into it right now. But uh, yeah, if, if, you're a, if you're a wannabe stand-up comedian, here's some material and I for told you. Us, I, even, I like that even better because it is so true, so accurate, what we see with the federal government, these agencies, what they're doing to we the people. And he is fighting for us. And so let's, uh, again, let's get behind him and get, make sure he wins in November. I'm not sure if uh, Jimmy Kimmel understood what the title of this uh, conversation is. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Bonnie yeah. Willis. Uh, did she get back to you today? Yeah, we subpoenaed her. Not yet. Um, I just talked Wait, to her. Wait, is staff. she supposed to get back to you today? Yeah, she's supposed to get documents. Well, to did us. you hear from her boyfriend? We haven't. <laughs> so some. I was talking about this in the office, and I said, I said, Fonny Wade, and it was like a Freudian slip, you know, like I, I, Fonny Willis and Nathan Wade. So, uh, uh, no, we haven't heard back from her yet. We'll see what we get from her. But there's a whistleblower in her office who we have talked to, our, the committee staff. Yeah, and she, uh, the whistleblower, uh, I think she's like four foot eleven, but Fonny Willis had seven police like escort her out when when she fired this lady, because this lady raised the concern that Miss Willis was not spending federal funds and the appropriate, not following the grant, uh, the rules of the grant and, and, and the grant dollars in the, in the appropriate manner. So uh, she raised this concern and then finally Willis fired her. She's now talking with our office and we'll see where that goes. And that's why we, we subpoenaed for records and documents related to this. We'll see what we get. Uh, there's still a few hours left in today. She also was interesting. She, instead of accepting service on the subpoena, she made us send the U.S. Marshals. Even though our office had talked with her office, we've had correspondence back and forth. She made the U.S. Marshals take the subpoena there. So uh, go figure. This is Bonnie Willis. And we all saw her, I think, her attitude on display when she took the, took the I stand thought it a few was weeks a, ago. I thought it was a skit, but I think it actually was real life. It was real. It well, was you know, real. we said we sent out a tweet that said we didn't invite Bonnie Willis to CPAC. But there is a funny sandwich with a chaser of Grey Goose vodka if you have enough cash, ready cash in your pocket. Yeah, the, the, the comedy routine from Mr. Slap coming out today, that's awesome. It's been a long year, Jim. Yeah, well, um, but we appreciate what you do. Well, as I, as I say sometimes, the immigration issue is extremely simple. The policies involved in fixing it are very complicated. The simple part is seal the border, Deport all the illegals. Now, <laughs> that's, the, that's the short answer, right? It's very, you get in, you have two policy objectives that you proceed with uh, utter determination on. Seal the border, no illegals in, everyone here goes out. That's very straightforward. In terms of the policy sets to accomplish this, as President Trump showed in his first term, it's, it's, a, it's a series of interlocking domestic and foreign policies to accomplish this goal. In no particular order, just to rattle off a few fast, you have your safe third agreements, you have remain in Mexico, finish the wall, you have robust prosecutions of illegal aliens, you do interior repatriation flights to Mexico, not back to the north of Mexico, it's very important. You re-implement Title 42, you have several muscular 212Fs, that's the travel ban authority, we did a few of those in the Trump administration. You would bring those back and add new ones on top of that. You would establish large-scale staging grounds for removal flights. So you grab front illegal front load washers and then you move do them not to the staging grounds. The and that's the tub to fill with water like top load washers. You dedicate the front load washers do not require the tub to fill with water like front load washers do not require the tub to fill with water like top load washers do not require the tub to fill with water Woke doctors are literally making boys into girls. They're practicing mutilation, not medicine, and they should be in prison. The mark because if you come like you just talked about to our house, right. you better bring a coroner with you. Yeah, exactly. When you come to the blue state, you can guarantee that there are free victims there. Yeah. And so this is why shall not be infringed our ability to protect ourselves, our businesses, the American way of life. The under I'm just going to say it. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they suck.
So luckily, we are not going back to the good old days of the Romneys and the Cheneys and... By the way, whenever you're the White House counsel, if you work for a Republican, everyone knows who you are. There's stories constantly about yeah. all the legal turmoil about every Republican president. I don't know if people realize that Joe Biden has a White House counsel. He's pretty much anonymous. I never read stories about him. I'm re I don't know. Maybe the guy did lie. But it sure is, a, is a, quite a contrast for Christopher Steele can give false information about President Trump, and he continues to get paid. This guy, this Mr. Smirnoff, can give false information. What they've said is false information, and he gets arrested. Double standard You know, again. I might just be sporting. Sure is. Catherine Herridge, what is going on? Well, we're, we're, we're trying to dig into this, but what happened here looks really, really wrong in my, my judgment because they've, they've grabbed everything. So this is her, her sources, her information. And that is just does not happen when you're talking about the, the press. We're talking about with CBS, just as a breaking story, CBS fired uh, uh, Catherine Herridge, who, by the way, has done an amazing job, an amazing journalist, fair journalist, um, and, and grabbed her stuff. I mean, literally grabbed her stuff. So uh, this is, again, I think this further encroachment by folks on the left, which now unfortunately controls the Democrat Party, this encroachment on First Amendment rights. And, you know, think, think, back, that we, think back to COVID. They told Americans, we had governors and mayors tell Americans, you can't go to church on Sunday. In America? I mean, think about that. The government we, closed down the church. Yes, it's crazy. And that we, I, I remember I gave a speech to the New Mexico Republican Party in Amarillo, Texas, because their liberal Democrat governor wouldn't let them assemble in their own state. So they had to go to Texas to get the freedom to assemble. And on and on it goes. So and it's I think scary. a lot of them just ended up staying because it was a much better place. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, this is scary what's happening to Catherine. Uh, many of you, I'm sure everyone knows what great reporting she's done over the years, both for Fox and then for CBS. But what CBS has done just doesn't make sense and something that we're going to dig into. So. Uh now, Democrats, they believed in these things some point between 20 years and like 20 minutes ago. Now, they are the party of forever wars abroad, high prices, low tea, and reverse racism here at home. And by the way, trusting Joe Biden for four more years in the Oval Office is like trusting Dominion to count your votes. It's a risky bet. <laughs> One quick thing, John Roberts is weighing into this, uh, well, he's a newsreader, but obviously he's allowed an opinion because he works at Fox Entertainment. So he's weighing into this whole Alabama IVF situation. Uh, he's entitled to his opinion, but you would think somebody who him and his wife have actually benefited with IVF, he would take a more responsible, uh, informative, uh, well, position. But no. He actually leaves out the. Just listen to how he says that KJP is wrong with linking um, Roe v. Wade to what's gone on in Alabama. It's very strange that John Roberts. John Roberts, you are what I would call a. Wow, you're not good, really. You've got experience on the subject. A lot of people would like to know an awful lot more. And instead, you're trying to pretend you don't know as much as you actually do. And what you do know, you're going down the lane of total incorrection. And you're getting all emotion about it as well. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre was just asked about the Alabama Supreme Court ruling that stated frozen embryos amount to unborn children. Listen to what she said. The state Supreme Court has put access to fertility treatments at risk for families who are desperately trying to get pregnant. It's unimaginable for people who want to become parents, and it's devastating example of the kind of chaos and confusion that has resulted from the overturning of Roe v. Wade. She went on to say that IVF is under attack, calling the ruling absolutely unacceptable. But, Sanders, she tied it to Roe v. Wade. And it has nothing to do with Roe v. Wade. This was a case in Alabama of a patient who wandered into an area where embryos were being stored, removed some embryos from the cryofreeze, dropped them, and the embryos expired. The, the court ruled that those parents were allowed to sue the hospital for a wrongful death, but it had nothing to do with Roe v. Wade. Yeah, obviously that, um, that will be... Um, discussed and analyzed after that was just said at the White House a few moments ago, something everybody's talking about both sides of the aisle, John, heading into tomorrow. Speaking of...